in this video we have to find uh, the uh, time domain signal x of t uh, given that the Fourier transform uh, the Fourier transform is uh, is mentioned in this uh, expression mathematical description of the Fourier transform is given uh, which can be uh, we can read it as x of j omega x of j omega is equal to unity when the absolute value of omega is less than w right and it is zero when the absolute value is greater than w uh, basically we have to uh, solve this integral which is the inverse Fourier transform x and we can uh, we can write the inverse Fourier transform uh, which gives us x of t the time domain signal uh, from its frequency domain pair 1 over 2 pi uh, integral minus infinity to plus infinity uh, this x of j omega multiplied by this exponential d omega keep this in mind here the variable is omega not t as we did in our previous examples so first of all uh, i would like to draw uh, this signal uh, on x, x of j omega so first of all let's draw x of j omega so if we draw uh, x, uh, uh, this signal on omega axis suppose this is our omega axis and it is zero and we are interested in plotting x of j omega according to the definition we can uh, always identify some points w here similarly we can have minus w points towards the left of this zero and all these are omega uh, the values of omega right these are the values of omega which are on omega axis or frequency axis right now all these values which are positive towards the right side of this zero and less than w uh, for all these values the absolute value would be less than w right and you can always find the absolute value of some number some number for example you have a number uh, unity and you want to find its absolute value right so you can always write it one uh, plus j times zero and you are interested in its absolute value which can be written as the square of the real part plus the square of the imaginary part and if you solve it it's a positive number right similarly all the values which are towards the left here those are negative and uh, th these points which are negative and these are uh, now, now keep this in mind that uh, when you move toward this uh, way uh, you are moving towards the increasing values of omega and when you move towards uh, the opposite way this way you are moving towards the decreasing values of omega so apparently when you see these values these are sm greater values than minus w they are greater than minus w but if you observe their absolute value right the absolute value suppose you have some point over here which is minus omega 1 although this minus omega 1 is greater than w but if you want to find its uh, absolute value right its absolute value that would be omega 1 square plus 0 square which is omega and it is a positive value right the absolute value is positive so all these points for all these points the absolute value would be positive but those absolute values would be less than w it would be less than w right all these points so our signal is defined for this range this range from minus w to w it is defined the first line defines this signal that it is equal to unity so basically it is one it is one here unity and for all the points here which uh, those points those frequencies which are greater than w those frequencies which are greater than w so these uh, the omega omega 
for all these values the magnitude the absolute value of omega would be greater than w right absolute value would be greater than w and the signal is defined as zero here so our signal is zero so basically our signal is zero for this point similarly all these points towards the left the absolute value of all these points would be greater than w this condition the absolute value of all these negative points would be greater than w and our signal is defined here zero in the above definition mathematical description so basically if i draw it on a fresh page if i draw this signal on a fresh page right if i draw it here uh, if i draw it on this page omega this is zero uh, w and minus w and this is unity here and zero in the rest unit minus w here so this is our x of j omega the Fourier transform of a signal which is unity in this range so it's an important signal let's try to find out the inverse Fourier transform for this one and that is given by x of t 1 over 2 pi uh, integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of j omega e raised to power minus j omega t and we have d of omega right you have d i think this is uh, let me rewrite that expression i hope this is uh, i hope this is e raised to the power plus j omega not minus right it's not minus it is e raised to the power plus j omega so let me rewrite this expression this is actually plus make this correction this is plus this one is basically a plus sign right so uh, we can evaluate uh, this integration it's not complex but we will see its plot actually we would be interested in finding out its so let's try to uh, draw it now keep this in mind that our signal our signal which is x of j omega it exists only from minus w to plus w it is unity and the rest of the range it is zero so this product this product would have value uh, this uh, not from minus infinity to plus infinity but from minus w to plus w so let me uh, let me change these limits in the next column I would say it's 1 over 2 pi minus w to plus w the signal is unity here and e raised to the power j omega t and t w keep this in mind the variable is w not t now solve this integral solve this integral this would be 1 over 2 pi and uh, it would be e raised to the power j omega t over uh, j times t because the variable is w now uh, uh, omega now minus w to plus w is the range right we are uh, integrating it uh, by keeping in mind that the variable is omega not t t is uh, t can be taken as constant here so it's now keeping in mind that uh, the integral let me let me rewrite it 1 over 2 pi and our integral is basically uh, we have to integrate our signal from minus w to w our x of j omega is unity e raised to power j omega t d omega right and this can be rewritten as 1 over 2 pi and the integral will be e raised to the power j omega t over j t keep this in mind variable is omega t is taken as 
constant here in this expression right so now you can write it as 1 over 2 times pi t uh, and this put the limits e raised to the power j uh, t limits of omega right so t w minus e raised to the power this is the upper limit now the lower limit e raised to the power j t and minus w right and over no just lower one okay so we can write it we can, no need to write this one so you just rewrite this limit now I would like to uh, uh, just come uh, just do it as uh, we need to rewrite it 1 over pi t and e raised to the power j t w minus e raised to the minus j t w and this 2j now I would write it here 2j now you are familiar with this expression from your mathematical uh, from elementary classes right this is equal to 1 over pi times t and uh, this is basically sine of sine of t w this is your x of t right it's your x of t now we can write it in the f uh, in the form of sync function so let's divide and multiply uh, by w so if i divide multiply here by w right and i multiply below by w right w divide and multiply by w now you can rewrite it as uh, w over pi sine of t w over uh, t w or you can say it's w over pi sync function of t w right so this is uh, this thing you can write it in the form of a, a sync function now uh, once you write it in the form of a sync function uh, you can plot it as a sync function so if we uh, plot this one on omega axis the frequency now we can plot it because this is x of t so we have to plot it on not on omega axis it is on time axis right time axis so we have on time axis we can see that x of t basically is a sync function which looks something like this we can identify a few points immediately for example at t equal to 0 when you put t equal to 0 sine of 0 was 0 right sine of 0 over 0 in the limiting case it would be equal to 1 and this point or sync function of 0 here you can say sine of 0 over 0 uh, in the limiting case when theta approaches 0 is equal to unity so you would be left with w over pi only so this point basically is w over pi you can find this first null right on the time axis and this would, this first null would occur when your t w is actually equal to pi or the time is equal to pi over w pi over w similarly here it would be minus pi over w so you can find out you can find you can uh, immediately uh, see that uh, x of t is basically a sync function your x of t is basically a sync function now if you compare it with your uh, previous example uh, now let me let me make a conclusion is in this example in this example we saw that when we had a frequency 
on omega axis when we had a square pulse x of j omega from minus w to w we saw that the x of t x of t is basically a sink function right and when uh, in the previous example we saw that when our uh, when in the time domain we have a pulse which is from minus t1 to t1 right we have a pulse x of t and we try to see its uh, transform x of j omega that was actually a sync function is something like this so you can see it's uh, this is the duality property duality property of the Fourier transform duality if you have a square rectangular pulse here in the time domain you will have a sink in the frequency domain if you have a, a rectangular pulse in the frequency domain you have a sink in the time domain right so just uh, go through uh, the definition of these sync function a more precise definition for a sync function uh, can be given uh, can be written in this form that sync function of theta can be written as sine of pi theta over pi pi theta right is a more precise uh, definition or you can say sine of theta over theta right you can say sine of theta over theta because you just just this consider this theta so sine theta over theta is actually a sync function of theta 